<clears throat> okay, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. This is the modern is Bible. This is the modern churches. They love this. The Catholics, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Catholics, the Sunday only. We love this. Hurrah, rah, rah, rah. Okay. Problem. We got a problem. Matthew's written with a Jewish flavor to a group of people called Israel or Hebrews. He's not preaching to a church. There is no church. There is no death, burial, resurrection. So, here we go. Seeing the multitudes. These multitudes came from chapter 4. In chapter 4, we left off. He's healing the sick, the lame, the deaf ones possessed with the devil. He's gathered a, a, a group of people. Hey, he can heal. Free medical. Oh, that's what Obama tried to bring in. Obama tried to do with the government what Jesus did. He healed people. He, he made them whole. And he didn't charge them nothing. Sound familiar? And when he was set, so he goes up in the mountain and he settles down. His disciples came on to him. So the disciples are a little bit off. Here they come around Jesus. He's on a mountain. He said, why did he go up to a mountain? Acoustics. To be heard better. Why do you think he got on the boat on the order? So you can hear better. When you check the Bible and you got one man preaching to a group of people, look at the location, study it. You will see that the voice would amplify. He opened his mouth, this is God, opened up his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed, that means happy. When Leah gave birth to Gad, she tells us the biblical definition of blessed. Everybody's going to call me blessed. Everyone's going to be happy. I had another son. I will name him Gad. I believe that's the name, Gad. Happy. Happy or blessed. Now, when Luke gives us the Beatitudes, a big word I learned in school. <laughs> Am I not smarter than you? And the people in the pulpit are like, How many points did you get in that game? Wow, I got better points on the way here to church. The people in the pew don't care about your Hebrew, your Greek, and your big words. That's why they're sleeping. And I think someone said to one of the famous preachers, what do you do when the congregation's asleep? He said, you better, you better do something to the preacher. You better wake that preacher up. Luke tells us, instead of blessed are, Luke will use the word ye. Making a group of people. Talking to the same group of people. And when you come to all four of the Gospels together, you can get biblical definition without the Hebrew, without the Greek. So blessed are the poor in spirit. Didn't say flesh. It said spirit. And remember, we're talking to the Jewish people. There's been 400 silent years. Jesus already knows they're going to go into tribulation period. Not only are they going to be poor by not having the mark, but they're going to be poor in spirit because, you know, there's no light. They're going to be poor in soul because there's no religious foundation and background. But poor in spirit, that's your life. 
your life, God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. Breathe, breath. Not, oh, I, you know, I don't have money. I don't have a boat. I don't have a car. It's, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, a literal physical kingdom with a king of kings, lord of lords, David's throne, the temple, and a, a palace. That's not what the church is looking for. That's what the Roman Catholic Church is looking for. We're the, you know, the, the Knights of Templar and the, 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 the uh, uh, Knights of Columbus, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses Kingdom Hall, the Mormons, they got a whole state dedicated to biblical names. And the Muslims go out there, you know, if you don't go to Allah, we're going to behead you. Religion will kill people for a kingdom. Christianity is our God died for you. If you're a born again Bible believing saved under the blood of Jesus Christ, you're not looking for a kingdom. You're looking for a person. The person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This kingdom of heaven is the millennial kingdom. Which the main focus is Israel. And I don't know how it's going to happen for the Christian. Not all Christians are going to enjoy it because not all Christians get an inheritance. Those that don't get the inheritance, I don't know what will happen to them. Okay? But I know those that serve and, 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 and deny the world and the flesh and everything, they will get an inheritance in the millennial kingdom. But I'm not doing it to look for the kingdom. I'm doing it to look for my Savior, to please my Savior. So that's Jewish. Jewish flavoring. I'm trying to work my tablet over here. Alright. So next, verse 4. When you start getting kingdom, there's a Baptist church in Daytona Beach and it's you know, bringing in the kingdom and something like that. All right, I won't ever go there. I don't care if they were, I don't care if they were a King James Bible-believing church. We're not looking for a kingdom. And then people say, Jesus, the king of the church, they sing about, he's not the king of the church. The only point that Jesus will be king of the church is when we give the kingship in the millennium, not all, and he's the king of kings. All right, blessed are they that mourn. Do you know people that mourn? Now look at the nonsense. I'm not saying Jesus. I'm looking at the world's nonsense. Blessed are they mourn, for they shall be comforted. All right, so let's take a situation here, and I, I look at things like that. Let's say you're at a funeral, 2022, and, and beloved one, you're crying, you're upset, they're dying, the cats is getting loaded into the ground, and they're lost. Somebody comes out and whips out a gun, bang, 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 and people die at the funeral. They're born. They're going to be comforted when they wake up in hell? You see, the Catholic Church, the religious Baptist churches, the Mormons, and all the other nonsense is when we die, we go to the happy, good, whatever land we believe in, utopia. I mean, even the Catholic Church will put, you know, they, they will burn in purgatory for a while. If you're not a Catholic, you burn longer. And with the Pope's decency of the Virgin Mary, you'll get whatever... You get to be under the Pope's footstool. Recognize that? You're talking about a nation of people who's had nothing but troubles and problems and, and turmoil. 400 years silence from God. Wait till Jacob's trouble seven years of satanicness. They're going to be mourning in a place prepared by God and then Jesus is going to come. 
Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. No Christian inherits the earth. No lost man inherits the earth. No religion takes care of the earth. Two things about the earth. To Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God said, this land is yours. You know, what the, you know what the Americans say? This land is my land. This is your land. From the sea to which is an ocean. You're trying to steal from Israel. You don't even have your own national anthem. You have to steal it from England who you hate. Which the words are now. God saved the king. And I loved it when, when not, not the queen, queen uh, Elizabeth died, but when, when her funeral, and there's King Charles III, they played the national anthem, and they all sang, God saved the king. And there's only one that did not say that, and that was the king. And he was not the same. Americans never say that. We have no king, we have a president. You mean like the presidents of Daniel? The ones who are going to get the earth is the Jews in the millennium under Jesus who is speaking. Which they'll deny and they'll crucify. And God will put the nation on the shelf for a while called the church age. Now you ought to recognize 5-6 if you've been around. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. All right. There's your soup kitchen verses. You know, Jesus fed the 5,000 Jews. There's only one disciple that wasn't a Jew. He was of Canaan. Are they hungry and thirsting after hot dogs, hamburgers, popcorn? No. Read the verse. There are thirsting after righteousness. Do you know who righteousness is? It's Jesus Christ. And we'll see that in verse 10, and we'll see that in verse 11 when we get there. The churches, and Baptist churches good. They will put, you know, we'll feed them hamburgers and fried chicken and cornbread. That's not what it says. And when the Jews come to the time of Jacob's trouble, it's not going to be the bread. It's going to be... They're going to need God, Jehovah. They just had two men, Moses and Elijah, showing up preaching. They had 144,000. And they got Satan incarnate in the world with the false prophet, the unholy trinity. You got to receive the mark in order to do any business and anything to eat or drink or anything. Any medical health care. You get what I said? Everything that Jesus is saying now, they're not going to be able to get under the Antichrist. He said, well, what, what would happen if the Jews had trusted Jesus Christ as the Messiah? They would have crucified him. They would have brought the red heifer. They would have repented over the red heifer and confessed their sins of, of killing him. They would have a natural revival under God. There would be no church age, period. They would go into Jacob's trouble for all the sins they've done as a nation. It would be everything to what the scriptures say today. No church age. You say, well, what would happen to the Gentile? Yeah, that's a good question. They asked that question to Paul. Hey, well, what about the Gentile? Well, God would just judge them by their conscience. And you know I'm here to tell you? You're not going to like it. But many of your Americans today, if God were to judge you by your conscience, which he's not going to judge you by Jesus, you all die and go to hell because you ain't got no conscience. We have a country today that can't even blush. You got school teachers that are having sex 
with the students. And recently, oh, don't tell anybody we're having sex. You got teachers getting in the classroom dressing up as drag queens and filthy words. You got people who don't even know what sex they are. You got people promoting abomination of the Bible, the word of God, of, of sodomy. You got a president who's supposed to stand upon the grounds of the Roman Catholic Church, doesn't. Uh, go ahead, kill your baby. And the government will take care of it. We gone bon bon glucose. Lester Roloff said America is a sin asylum and it's being run by the patients. Yes, it is. I went into prison the other day to see somebody, visit somebody. And right in the middle of the thing, I said, you know what? And there was a bunch of kids running around seeing other, you know, their fathers, their uncles, whoever, brothers, whatever. They're running around, they're playing games, card games, and all kinds of games, you know, whole puzzles. I told the person I was with, you know what? This gives the children a false sense of what prison is. So then it's just like the school cafeteria. It's like the school library. Hey, you come here, play guns, have a good old time. You just wear you have to wear the same clothes every week. Or you know, same colors and all that. The person I, I visit, he, he has a dorm. I said, it sounds like you're in college. I didn't have a dorm when I went to school to be a doctor. When I was in the prison ministry for eight years, it used to be called a pod. A little squeezy place where, where peas were. You got to look at what we're reading, not a modernism, but the nation of Israel. We know what the scriptures say. We know what their future is. And again, it's been 400 years of silence. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes have been Grinding them in with rules and regulations. You didn't wash your hands. Who oh, bad boy in you? Where'd you get that one? Where do you find that in the Moses Law? And yet our parents can you gotta wash your hands if you're cutting the table. How about the fact is every time Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath, they got all upset. What did Jesus do? On the Sabbath that he violated the law. Did he use a scalpel? Did he use the things you put in your ear to hear the heartbeat? Did he get the blood pressure thing out? No, he spoke with his word. And they got all upset. We are looking at not the church. We are looking at Israel. Israel is in sour condition with Jehovah. They are a sick nation. Wherever Jesus goes, there are sick people. They're lining up at the door. They are a hungry nation. And they attach themselves to Jesus by multitudes because what they're getting through Jesus, they didn't get through the Pharisees, the scribes, the, the synagogues, and the temple. And friend, we are in the church age of that today. You're not getting fed the truth in the churches today. You're getting baloney. And baloney to a, to a Jewish person is unclean. We're coming up. There's going to be there are some Baptist churches. We're going to celebrate either one of two things. Trick or treat or trunk or treat. It's still Satan's birthday. And then we're going to come up to, I love this one, the Baptist, Baptist priest. Well, we know it's not Jesus' birthday, but we... If you know it's not Jesus' birthday, what are you celebrating as? Well, if you know that drink of water has arsenic in it, but it doesn't taste good. I think. I don't know. I don't know what arsenic tastes like. And when you go running it, I mean, how many times have I visited a church and tried the church out? And it's not long I'm sitting in that pew, We maybe a couple weeks, maybe first week, and we open your Bible to Matthew. <laughs> I purposely run, if Mark has it or Luke has it, I run to them. I don't run to Matthew. You know why they won't run to Matthew, I mean Mark 16? Because Mark 16 says, go to all the world and preach the gospel. That's a much harder 
and public view than what Matthew says. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Matthew is a Jewish king. Jesus. Where we live on? Verse 8. Oh, verse 6. No, thunder, they shall be filled. Filled with what? Righteousness. What is that righteousness? Jesus. Jesus is God's righteousness. Without Jesus, you wouldn't even know what righteousness is. Because Jesus is sinless. Jesus is perfect. Jesus is God. Jesus is the one. Listen, I guarantee whatever life they had, I don't know. I don't know if he was a carpenter, but whatever life they had, I guarantee for the brothers and sisters of Jesus, or Catholics don't believe that, and the schoolmates with Jesus, I guarantee the preachers, I mean the teachers and the people say, why can't you be more like Jesus? I went to school like that. My brother, my older brother, I, I came up behind him. I was a couple of days behind. Hey, well, you know, Frank did this. I don't care what Frank did. I do it my way. Frank took this class. I don't care. I don't want that class. I want metal and tool works. Well, you know, Frank took Spanish. I don't care about Spanish. Back then, you couldn't press one yet. That's what have been my answer. I'm not Frank. I got people today, and you know, they look at me, you know, they're 70. Well, I'm 70 years old, and I'm not. Listen, you didn't live the life I lived. The things I've done in my life has done more physical harm. Thank, don't you thank God you're not going through health conditions? I've been up against nuclear power plants, have you? I could have picked up a rock and thrown it at, the, at two nuclear reactors. I worked in the United States Submarine Corps. I built United States submarines, four or five of them. Nuclear reactors. Uh, yeah, well, well, no, uh, but I almost lost my job because of, because of a nuclear incident. Lucky I was able to get out of that. I'm not telling. No, I'm just saying. Did you have to deal with nuclear? Did you have to deal with working inside of a big, huge toothpaste tube of metal grinding and, and, and sparks and welding and, and fumes and paint? I did. My health shows for it. Did you smoke cigarettes? Some people, oh no, well, I smoke cigarettes stupidly. That's a problem of mine. Righteousness is Jesus. And they're not going to get hamburgers and hot dogs and fried chicken. They're going to get Jesus. Then Jesus will take care of their physical needs. Blessed are the merciful. They shall attain mercy. That's any age. That's church age. If you be merciful to somebody, God will be merciful to you. That's a rule of life. Primary, if you treat people right, they'll treat you right. And there are some exceptions to the rules. Blessed are the pure in heart. All right, what are you going to do with them? They shall see God. What are you going to do with God? Jesus said God's a spirit. You can't see a spirit. No man sees God at any time. Throw that one, you modern preacher at. Or preacher with his collar. See what he does with that one. See how he fumbles. Blessed are the peacemakers. You mean the United Nations? You mean the President of the United States? Congress? I mean, Jimmy Carter with, with, with the peace, Ronald Reagan signing the peace treaties. We tore down the Iron cook, cur Curtain. The Cold War is over. Now, how come we're, we're fearing nuclear war again?
That's my question. If you said, and you said the, the, the Cold War is over, the Iron Curtain is going down, the Berlin Wall, it's all over, it's done. And then today, oh, we're going to blow up, we're going to have nuclear war, we're going to get underneath your school desk. I was like, that dad told someone, gee, I survived the breathing calendar, I survived uh, a, a zombie apocalypse, I survived Y2K, and I survived two nuclear wars. <laughs> hey! Don't forget the Hornets, COVID-19, I don't know what happened to 1 through 18, maybe they failed. They got the RSV, I'll tell you, yeah, RSV, yep, the Rise Standard Version of the Killer. But blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. That's me. I'm not a child of God because I go out there and spread peace. Go ask the people at the farmer's market. See how peaceful I am. Every Saturday they call 911 on me. He's preaching and screaming and hollering. We can't do this because he's preaching Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Ask the, ask the cashiers at the, at the store I shop at. And they got to come up to me. What are you doing, sir? Uh, would you like one thing? No. You can't do that with those pieces of paper. I'm not making peace with the God. Now listen, your church, and you may be making peace with the world, but not me. I ripple the waters. They come in. We, we, we calm the waters. When I come in with Jesus and the gospel, and I throw big rocks in there. <laughs> I'm a child of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the death of Jesus Christ, through the, the, the burial of Jesus Christ, through the resurrection of Christ, through the adoption of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. I am a child of God. You got religion, we'll use that verse to say we're going to heaven. Because we're the children of God. We try to make peace. Now who says that? Who says that? Who says that? The Mormons. You mean all the people that died on the Mormon trail? You mean your Mormon leader that was killed by all the husbands of the wives he stole in jail? How many? How many people died because your Mormon church and your sexual pleasures of sin? That ain't peace. How many Christians today? You gotta get a gun. I stand up for my gun. Oh my gun. Gun right. That ain't peace. I had, I had a preacher one down here in Port Orange, Florida, and he every time he the peace in the Bible, he would quote it be his gun. Changing the Bible, aren't we? How about the, the Catholic Church? Peace, peace, peace. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Martyrs Mirror. Uh no one on Facebook. Moderators for Christ, is it? There's a monthly uh, e uh, newspaper that you come to the mail. Faithful Moderator, something like that. Ninety percent of those moderators, yeah, China, yeah, Russia, yeah, maybe African nations, yeah, maybe Korea, but Catholic Church, the Crusaders. The Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Templar, killed and tortured the Inquisition of Christians who would not give in to Mary, who would not denounce their beliefs for the Mass, who would not put their faith and trust in Mother Church that held to God, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible. They died for the Word of God of Wycliffe. And you got Baptists today. Baptists today. They can't even hold, know what Bible it is they're supposed to hold. And I got a preacher who doesn't even bring a Bible to the pulpit. And when I tried to help his church get to the right Bible, to the Word of God, with pamphlets and tracts, they were called garbage. You filthy wolf in sheep clothing. And he'll get up there and word this night. And yeah, you know, yeah. Liar. 
liar. Maybe your pants are being hellfire. The world will use the, and the moderates will use peacemaker. You see, we're the children's probably United Nations by a hold to that. We got scripture right outside our big building in New York. Yeah, I know people got scripture too. They don't know how to use it. They don't know what it means. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Jump off the Empire State Building. Huh? What? I can't do that. What? I thought you said you could do all things through Christ with strength in me. Well, jump off. I can't do that. Somebody's a liar. I'll tell you a good one there for the peacemaker. He's a Southern Baptist. And he builds houses four to four. He just said, I think, a hundred birthday. Jimmy Carter. Not once he talked about the blood of Jesus Christ. Blessed are, okay, now verse 10, 11, and 12 can be us, the Christians. It also goes to the book of Acts. It will go into the book of to the book of to the tribulation period. Blessed, happy are they, are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Oh yeah, I'm picked on, I'm teased. I don't get the promotions. I don't get the job. I don't get the fellowship with the church, and I'm supposed to be happy. Look at Paul. At the end of Paul's life, all he had was four old Luke. All right, now, remember we, we, we read about righteousness back up here? Verse 6. They that which hunger and thirst after righteousness. All right, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. You know, you could be persecuted because you say the wrong word. You can be persecuted because you're born of the wrong color. You can be persecuted today because you voted for the wrong party. You can be persecuted because you don't vote. That's not what we're talking about. You are persecuted for righteousness sake. What is righteousness? Jesus. You are persecuted because of Jesus. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven again. That's not us. Do you know what happened to the Jews in the book of Acts in 2022? If a Jew comes home and says, Mom, Dad, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I don't know how you say it in Hebrew. Get out of my house. I've known Jewish saved Christians. A rectable, I don't believe they would lie or anything, who told me they're saved and their mother and father had a mock funeral for them. The mother would say, well, what about Johnny? Oh, he died. Well, how, how did he die? He, he's dead. Don't want to talk about it. The Jewish home, some homes, it may be an electric candle or a candle. They have a light in the window when their children grow up and go out. And that light shows, hey, this is my child. He's a light. And if that child believes, woman or, or man, believes on Jesus, they turn off the bike road. They, they pull the candle. They never light it again. That's persecution. Do you know why the church had to take a take up an offering for the saints in Jerusalem? Because they lost their jobs, they lost their housing. Here's a here's a, a instance in the Bible where the missionary church supported the home church. You know why they were selling their properties for God? And you know what? It wasn't doing them no good to be Jews, Christians, to be living in Israel. Because they were being teased, they were being tortured, they were being... Listen, they preached Jesus in the temple, and they were beaten, they were put in jail. We'll see that in a moment. Hey, 
and God looked at the early book of Acts and the tribulation Jews who will suffer for Jesus, you're going to get a kingdom of heaven. Come on, like Noah's Ark. Don't you think the Jews are going to flee in the tribulation period to a place prepared for them by God? Don't you think they're going to be harassed? Don't you think they're going to be hunted? Don't think you think they're going to be teased? Don't you think they're going to be ostracized? Oh, where are you going? There's a place prepared. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, you think the Messiah is coming. Ha, 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 ha. Like they did with Noah. As the days of Noah. Ha, ha, Noah, you. What is this rain? Ha, ha. Ha, ah, ah, what is this? And he, ah, 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 ah. Oh, yeah, uh, fire and bruise. Oh, yeah, sure. As the days of law. Oh, no, you throw that at the church age. That ain't the church age, my friend. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. John and Peter. Paul, how many times was Paul whipped and beaten and put in jail for Jesus, for the word of God? Paul will write some of his letters, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Paul was a Jew. Shall I say all manner of evil against you falsely. Okay? Mistreated. Your prison, you were whipped, you were killed, your property was mis was uh, was taken, you were banished because you followed Jesus. Listen, when they were first called Christians in Antioch, you know what that meant? Ill, you belong to that man over there. That wasn't a good name. That was an insult. And people call themselves Christians today in the past. They don't even realize that name was an insult. Now the Catholic Church calls themselves Christians. You mean the ones you were killing? Now watch this. For my sake. Alright? If you go out there in the public and you do something stupid, you go out in the middle of the road to hold a sign and preach and and stall off traffic, and you get a risk message. You were not persecuted falsely. You were an idiot. Okay? If you go on private property, and when they ask you to leave, and you don't leave, you're breaking the law rightfully to them because if they post the sign and you know it's private property you don't belong there the government has given us well you know we ought not we ought to obey god rather than man and what would you do if the jehovah witnesses came to your front front yard what would you do if the mormons came to your church and took over What would you do, Baptist Church, if the Democrats tried to turn your church into Democrats? <laughs> well, it's not their place. Yeah, like some places are not your place. We still have places and legal places to be and take Jesus. Now, if we lose those rights, then... We deal with it as me. John and Peter were not allowed at the temple to preach Jesus. They were told. But they said, listen, that temple belongs to God. And they took a beating. And righteously took a beating. Now, if you got up a kind of a porch. If you went to Pilate's porch where he held Jesus and started preaching, if the if the Romans chopped off your neck and put you on a cross, you deserved it. If you went in a Catholic church and started breaking Dolly's heads and all that, and you were arrested, you deserved it. 
Well, you know, the Bible says that they're going there, break the images and destroy. Uh, that's Israel. That's not the church. You didn't rightly divide, did you? So you can suffer rightly or you can suffer illegally. You better suffer for his sake and not, oh, the church, our church. Because there are Christians today, they will suffer for their church, not for Jesus. Rejoice. And ye, and be exceedingly glad. He said, be happy for, for persecution. Verse 12, he said, rejoice and be exceeding glad. For what? For great is your reward in heaven. That can be us. He didn't say kingdom. Verse 11 can be us. You can apply 11, 12, and parsley 10. But 11 and 12, you can put on the church age, it will fit. The life of Paul. The life of Peter. Peter died on a cross upside down. Philip died being rocked to sleep by the Pharisees. I think Andrew was pulled apart being tied to two horses. I mean, you can look at the accounts on how the disciples were killed. You can read the Fox's Book of Martyrs and see how they were killed for Jesus. And there is a martyr's crown. That's a reward in heaven. That martyr's crown, those crowns there, you will wear them on the street of New Jerusalem. If you earn them. For so persecuted they the prophets that runs the Jewish history. The church is to study Jewish history. Because we're living the days of Jeremiah right now. Which were before you. The same thing they did to them, they'll do to you. And we know that John and James and Peter and Andrew and Paul, Silas and Aquila, we knew they knew Jewish history and told them that. And a lot of times they brought up Jewish history to remind you. You know what the churches are not, you know what the Bible churches are not doing today? They are not doing church history. You say, well, will we be persecuted? History repeats itself. But we are in Matthew. We are in a book for and about Jews. Now there are some places. I'm not saying Matthew is complete. Hey, don't, don't use it for the church age. I'm not saying that. Don't you dare tell people I said that. But when you come to the kingdom of heaven, that ain't us. There are things in here that are not for us. Verse 11 and 12, that's us. Um... In my notes here. Well, look, look at two before we close. I missed this. Verse six is for any age; those that th that thirst after righteousness, God will fill you. You're to pray as a Christian for the Holy Spirit to be filled in you. That righteousness is the is Jesus. But I want to show you one more place here before we leave. Verse seven. Uh, I'll show you the air. Verse 6 is the Holy Spirit. Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. They shall obtain mercy. It does not say salvation. You can be merciful and you can get mercy and die and still go to hell. You'll find in baptism, you'll find these Christians. I mean, they can step on an egg and not break it. And they may go off into hell. 